This is Twit. A recent developer blog discussing the release of Chrome 120 included a little blurb that reminded me that it's about to be 2024. The blog wrote, and a reminder that Chrome is working toward deprecating third-party cookies. In January, meaning two weeks from now, an experiment begins that could affect your website, so it's important that you check. And they provided a link to an article titled, Preparing for the End of Third-Party Cookies for Auditing and Mitigating Steps. On that page, they wrote, if your site uses third-party cookies, it's time to take action. Actually, it would have been time a while ago because, you know, two weeks. <laughs> it's time to take action as we approach their deprecation. Chrome plans to disable third-party cookies for 1% of users starting in Q1 of 2024 to facilitate testing and then ramp up to 100% of users by the third quarter of 2024. The ramp up to 100% of users is subject, is subject to addressing any remaining competition concerns of the UK's Competition and Markets Authority, the CMA. Okay, so what Google is referring to here is that it appears that the UK's government Competition and Markets Authority has expressed some concern on behalf of UK advertisers that they might be materially damaged by Google's removal of third-party tracking cookies from Chrome. From, from Chrome. Oh, gee. So this appears to be, you know, the sort of nonsense that any global technology behemoth, such as Google, just needs to put up with as part of doing business. Anyway, nothing will deter Google from doing this, and, you know, that's good news. Their posting continues, our goal with the privacy sandbox is to reduce cross-site tracking while still enabling the functionality that keeps online content and services freely accessible by everyone. Deprecating and removing third-party cookies encapsulates the challenge as they enable critical functionality across sign-in, fraud protection, advertising, and generally the ability to embed rich third-party content in your sites. But at the same time, they're also the key enablers of cross-site tracking. In our previous major milestone, we launched a range of APIs providing a privacy-focused alternative to today's status quo for use cases like identity, advertising, and fraud detection. With alternatives in place, we can now move on to begin phasing out third-party cookies. Okay, so as we know, Google's replacement, which will allow advertisers to obtain some weak interest categories about visitors, is called Topics, T-O-P-I-C-S. We've talked about it here several times, and it's a terrific solution. So 2024 will finally be the year when third-party cookie behavior is changed for the better. It won't be that a third-party site cannot still place a cookie into a user's browser. They can. But that same third-party site will not be able to retrieve that same cookie when that visitor is at any other site. And that's a huge change in behavior. Firefox led the way with this more than two years ago when, with Firefox 86, in February of 2021, they introduced total cookie protection. Back then, it was present but not enabled by default. Two years later, in April of this year, it went live and was enabled by default. And, you know, the world as we end it did not end. Did, you know, the world as we know it did not end. Everything kept working. All that happened was the addition of cookie storage partitioning. Historically, all web browsers maintained one single global cookie jar, which held all the cookies being stored by the browser. This was the, sing th this was the single fact which made tracking possible. 
since any advertiser offering content to multiple websites would receive their same tracking cookie no matter where the user traveled. But with the adoption of Firefox's total cookie protection, each website effectively gets its own private cookie jar, which stores any cookies that anyone wants to set while the user is at that site. But once the user changes to any other site, that site's cookie jar then becomes current. So while advertisers are still welcome to set any cookies they want at every site, all cookie linkage between sites is then broken. Google certainly already knows that catching up with Firefox in this regard won't end the Internet. They understand that turning this on for 1% of users next month is going to be just fine. But at the same time, there's no arguing that this really does represent a significant change to the way browsers have ever worked by default. Firefox did it a couple of years ago. Since April, it's been on by default. Everything kept working. So it's reasonable, I think, for Chrome, you know, the elephant in the room, browser-wise, to be sticking a toe in the water, you know, at 1% before jumping in headlong, which they're going to do by the time we get halfway through 2024. So anyway, we know that change often needs to be forced. If anyone is still like holding on to some need for third party cookies to be global across browsers, you know, that's got to end. Chrome is saying, Hey, we're not kidding about this. This change is coming. You need to make sure that this isn't going to be breaking anything weird that you might be doing. So yay for that. And it's going to end up, you know, uh, once once Google has topics and third-party cookies are, are sequestered within their own individual cookie jars, Chrome is going to then be able to continue blocking, tracking, and stopping it wherever they can. And as we've also just seen with GPC, and do not track, you know, the global privacy control and do not track, we're beginning to have legislation that's going to be enforcing this too. So I think in the not too distant future, we are truly going to be seeing a different world where browser-based tracking is no longer happening the way it has historically. Hey, we should talk Linux. It's the operating system that runs the internet, a bunch of game consoles, cell phones, and maybe even the machine on your desk. But you already knew all that. What you may not know is that TwitNow has a show dedicated to it, The Untitled Linux Show. Whether you're a Linux pro, a burgeoning sysadmin, or just curious what the big deal is, you should join us on the Club Twit Discord every Saturday afternoon for news, analysis, and tips to sharpen your Linux skills. And then make sure you subscribe to the Club Twit exclusive Untitled Linux Show. Wait, you're not a Club Twit member yet? Well, go to twit.tv clubtwit and sign up. Hope to see you there.